All right. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to our Thursday night, Friday morning regular meeting. Uh, this is just a really casual time for anybody to come into the room, and we'll discuss a topic and answer some questions. Um, tonight's topic, I'm going to take Sort It Out, which is this kind of the quiet, easy to play game in Blue Canoe, and see how you can take that into your classroom. Um, and we have one burning question in the room, which is, has been coming up quite a bit lately. For those who have studied with us and really know about our controlled vowels, the essence of the question is, what really is the or sound? You know, it's an R controlled sound, and yet, you know, on the chart, it's orange, but in Blue Canoe, it's coded as a rose word, like horse or before. So I'm going to save a little time um, after we do our teaching tip. We'll dive into that as uh, kind of quick and dirty as we can and know that our control is always a really um, ongoing, interesting topic. Okay, wonderful. So tonight's teaching tip comes from Laura McIndoo, who, you know, is always doing new stuff out there in New Mexico. Um, and so she was thinking, how can I uh, finish up the day? She had, you know, a long class, something like two and a half hours. People were kind of tired. And she had words that she had already been working on with them, vocabulary words. Um, and she just put them on big post-it notes or sticky notes. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. Uh, switching over to my document camera. So she took two cards onto her black, her whiteboard. And this is my whiteboard right here. It's a little one, but you can imagine if you're working with some kind of a, a whiteboard or a glass board, you can put two color vowels up there. And then she simply put a line down the center of the board and she had everybody line up in the room in one file, one uh, line, right? And as they moved to the front, she had words on sticky notes, big sticky notes. And I have words on little sticky notes. But the point is that as people walked to the front of the room and made it toward the front, she'd simply give them a word and they had to put it up on the board in red or gray. In this case, it could be what else? What would be some good combinations? Green and silver, red and gray, maybe red versus black, eh, ah, right? Or eh, ah, ah, you could do three categories. But the point is you want to come up with um, those words in advance and then just see where your students put them. These should be words that they already know, that they've already been working with. This is really very much a, a review visit of again, how they're hearing this word in their mind. So as they walked up, I'm show you a couple words here. Here's the word repeat, repeat. Only nobody's saying it for them. They're simply looking at it by this point. So they've done all the work. They've put it in the vowel organizer. They've used their hand. But remember, we're always looking for that opportunity to ferret out the words that just haven't quite gone into their right place in your student's mind. And so the student will walk up and you, know, you might find a surprise. They might put it there. You think, wow, okay, we know we need to review repeat. Yeah, and then once the students come up and we can say, you know, they do something like this. Um, next student puts this here. Next person is looking at this word. Hmm, I guess I'll put it here because there's nothing else. It must go there. And I'll look at this word and maybe it follows. I'll go with that, right? Karen, so Matthew had a few ideas. Yeah, good. And so let me grab those comments. Um, so basically, you get this window on what your students are still thinking about these words. Um, yeah, and so words like increase and record are interesting. They can fit into two categories. So you have to be thoughtful about your categories and about the words that you're giving. Okay. Uh, for example, you, you don't want to end up with um, green and red with the word read because that could be read or read, right? And when we cultivated or curated, sorted out, we had to do that kind of work too. We had to ferret out words that could be either of these colors depending on regional accent, okay? Um, so you don't wanna have any, any instances where it could be either. You really want it to be a this or that kind of a setup. Um, but it was as simple as that. And, and then here's, so, so, so far we're kind of interested, right? We're sort of seeing what our students think. Um, and then we can simply go up after they've had a seat or they're standing up now in sort of a semicircle and simply take the words that um, are in one column and flood it and see if it works. So green, tea, 
read, greet, greet, greet. I say great. What color is this? Greet. So let's move, it. and then we can all decide. We're going to move it over here. Great, great, day, great. So now let's flood all of these. Can everyone try that with me? Ready? Gray day, repeat, 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 repeat. Okay, we'll put it over here. Um, gray day, wait, wait, eraser. Okay, great, say, 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 oh, seat, seat. Okay, seat. So we can have a bit of this moving back and forth behavior. Um, and then if you're in sort of a class with more advanced words, you can also throw in a few in your stack that are neither and see what they do with those and really give them some critical thinking opportunities. So they might then have um, the word, um, you know, this word right here. And where does that one go? It looks like seat, repeat, read, and great. And yet it's neither green nor gray. Right. If you're wondering where you can find these words easily, don't forget that in the color vowel approach, we have all kinds of words already categorized in the back area. So if you look here, for example, uh, just as a close up, if you come down, you can see that um, these are categorized by topic. Uh, you might have a session on um, personal information, or you might be working on parts of the body or classroom words, what have you. And then here are all of the categories for you, okay? So we have a lot of words that are already ready to go, easy to pick out if you want to put, set up an activity of some kind, okay? Um, any questions about what you might do with that activity or how you might um, create a variation on it? Seem like something you might do? Yeah? Give it a try. That simple line down the wall, okay? And they're sticking it up there. Yeah, great. Hey, um, so I want to get to the great burning question a little bit here. Karen, I have uh, a question for that. Sure. I'm thinking about Neil and Roland um, specifically, how they're online a lot. And so is there a way that you would suggest translating it for them? Is that right, guys? I think you spent a lot of time with your, yeah. Yeah, um, certainly I could, you know, right now I would take um, a new slide here. And that's you know, I would take one PowerPoint. I would Roland use PowerPoint and um, simply create little text boxes with words and you can move them around. Yeah. Um, and I even have some activities like that, that, um, I mean, it's, it's quite easy to set up. So you just have your whiteboard is PowerPoint. Yeah. That could be a good way to go. Any other thoughts on that? Yeah. We'll give it a try and then we can go from there. And Roland, did you have a thought there? No, okay, all right, um, good. So can we take a few, we have about um, five minutes to get into a little bit of our control and that's always an interesting topic for sure. Um, on the chart, let me see if we got, there we go. On the color vowel chart, we talk about our controlled vowels as starting in one color and moving to purple. And in this way, we can choose any color, move to purple with it, and hear something that belongs in a word that we know. For example, we could start at green, E, and go ahead and trace it, ear, right? And now what kinds of words have ear? Hear, beer, <laughs> fear, you know, and you can think of some multi-syllable words, great. So we can do that with any one of these. And the front vowels are easy, right? Ear, air, a little bit of interesting accent variation here. Is it air or air? But in the end, these sweep up and create the sounds in fair or there or so forth. But by the time you come to the back of the mouth, remember, and Roland has, has been watching this a lot lately. He's in the course right now. Um, but remember that your mouth is this way, and, and I'm holding my hands here, if everyone wants to kind of try that. This is the back of your vocal tract. So your mouth is opening here, ah, ah, right? This angle is right back here in the chart. And so the differences between all of these sounds become very minimal. And the only way they're really different is where they go. So remember the, the so-called o, o, o vowels, not the letter O, but the shape of the mouth. They all start O, and then orange is going to 
be a matter of do you start down in Auburn or or do you start up in Rose? Oh, sorry, or or okay. And so we have a lot of accent variation here. And so between Rose and Auburn, the two big players in accent variation back there, we simplified to have one color vowel for learners. And that convenience vowel sound is orange door. So orange door is a sort of a proxy for simplifying that conversation when we're working with the chart because teachers, we're, we're working with our arms, we're doing vowel yoga, but when we move over to blue canoe, we don't have that, um, we don't have all that dialogue going on, right? They just have this in their hand. And so we've, to this point, we've gone with, with one simple option, which is that if they use rose and move to purple, they will in effect have that or sound. It may not be exactly your or sound, right? So if um, Christine, you know, you're from Chicago, I think you might have some or, or. Eh, it's hard to say or, right? But we'll have a lot of variation here. So why are we going to uh, burden our students with, with that self-knowledge and dialogue? Um, so we actually included Orange Door for a couple reasons. And one was that over the last 20 years, it has come again and again from our own students, Chinese students, especially, because I worked with a lot of Chinese students, Spanish speakers, they all, they all came to me and thought it was their idea. They're like, we need orange. I'll tell you why. And I was like, I, I, oh, I, please tell me why. <laughs> and so then once again, we'd put it back into the chart, came again and again. So orange is sort of by popular demand. Um, when we're working with this whole visual, um, but that involves the work of a teacher, right? So we have these kind of, these two pieces playing against each other in effective ways, knowing that in Blue Canoe, we're going to have the 14 kind of essential minimum number of vowels uh, so that the cognitive load is minimal when you're working alone with this device. But then you go into a classroom and you have a knowledgeable teacher like you all, and you can start to explore. So if you're, and Roland is, by the way, you're just about, next week we're gonna move into the idea of moving vowels. But it's so powerful. Um, any, anyone have any thoughts on this? Kind of know everyone in the room here has been through Color Vowel Basics Level 1 or is in it right now, which is pretty exciting. Um, or at least a lot of the folks I see, yeah, everyone I see here. So I'd like some thoughts from you too on Now's question about um, orange what, you know, versus rose. Or, or are are you finding that you have trouble conceiving it as as a rose sound, or is it working for you? When I uh, when I play, uh, um, for example, uh, the sentences like talk talk about talk it out or something, the um, the the AI often corrects me, uh, even though I say or, but. <laughs> I guess I say uh, I'm closer to orange than I am to rose vote. Uh, I guess the movement, is, the movement of my jaw. Uh, yeah, you might be starting at Auburn or. Yeah. or uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Oh. yeah there is no orange. It's it's sort of an artifact if you want to think of it that way. It's a convenience mm. color. Yeah. Mm. So. Mm. Yeah, so that you can tell this is, it's quite profound. I just want to say, if you need to go, you should. Um, it is 30 minutes after the hour, and we, you know, we, we contract for 15 minutes, but I'm staying. Happy to keep talking, okay? Um, so listen here, we've got, if you come down, yeah, uh, uh, or, or. This would be a very common movement for a lot of people for the, the sound horse, horse. Or they might continue, yeah, or, or, or horse, horse, horse. So in the end, do we really need to expose learners to that inner dialogue? Or can we split the middle and come into this convenience place, right? Um, so it's really there for them. Um, some of us happen to have it in our own accent. So this really works for me. Um, the orange and door work for me. But for some uh, native speakers of English, the word orange also presents its own interesting sort of noticing, which is they, they might say orange or orange and door. They, so those sound different to each other. Yeah, to, to me in British English, they're, they're quite different. Orange door, they're, they're 
they're pretty different for me. Right. And I, I remember when we would, when I was going through the uh, pronunciation class last uh, uh, last year, yeah. I found myself having a lot of Auburn words compared to the other people in the class with British English. So that's right. That's right. Especially if you if you do speak British English, you're going to find that time and again um, that rows won't feel very comfortable for uh, what you do in Blue Canoe. Um, but you can think of it as Auburn. And we've tried we've trained the ML to be fairly flexible so that you shouldn't get um, ding too much. But we're always working on that. Always <laughs> working. So, yeah, Matthew, you'll a lot of Auburn. Matthew, what do you hear as a French native French speaker? What? I mean, about orange and door I'm really uh, curious well uh, not really not the or like this this uh, sensation of closing mm -hmm. uh, there's a sensation of closing with or uh -huh, coming way up here for the er when i when i uh, pronounce or or when i use the r control or when i pronounce uh r i i often retract my head a little like um yeah, yeah like yeah. like a door or a, yes yes interesting it's, it's kind of a technique but uh, uh -huh. um in 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 uh french the r sound is is uh, pronounced r. right you so it kind of scared me there <laughs> 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 no, no, of course not. No, in the French, you know, it's going to come up in kind of a uh, 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 mm. and then for Spanish or, or Japanese, it might uh, 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 there might be a tap here. Um, so for... the real important thing is that we simply not touch, right? Mm. And whether it, whether it comes all the way with this R, you know, that you're describing with this movement, mm. or if you have more of a British approach that simply comes a little lower, it sounds mm. a bit like a mustard vowel. Um, and Neil, you'd be m more the appropriate person to, to speak mm. to that. Um, can you go ahead and just model for us how you would say, bef like for the word horse? Horse. 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 So we've got horse. horse. In horse. fact, is that an Auburn word for you? Auburn. Yeah. And it probably horse. stays here, horse. horse. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. And so a lot, of, a lot of those R controls don't move at all for British speakers. Horse, tomato, with tomato, uh, car the mm. car or the cart right so you might stay down here but i think if you go to the north of england and even scotland you get a very very strong controlled r orange orange uh-huh so it might even touch with a yeah. trill door door open okay. the door <laughs> yeah so there's and a lot yeah uh-huh and also uh I, I guess for scottish speakers um we've heard that like uh, time and again uh, maybe Scottish speakers, I don't know, but uh, uh, blue and wooden, they're kind of, yeah. they're often the same, like uh, they don't have wooden or they don't have olive sock. That's they're right. Uh, so yeah. just as we have this gray line here for Auburn and olive, and this is, this is a very common merger where the two categories become one for speakers of North American English. We could have gray lines in any of these areas, depending on which particular region we're talking about. So if we go to Georgia, North Carolina, suddenly you're going to have a gray line between, um, well, silver and red don't touch right here because gray is this big mover, but silver and red are a merger, or um, wooden and blue, or wooden and mustard, like full and full, full, full. Right, so these lines start to become quite blurry depending on where you go. So you might find yourself modifying your own color vowel chart to recognize this. And that's fine. You know, think of it as dressing it up to, to fit to the occasion. Um, it's really here as a, di as a dialogue piece to support your noticing. And then you'll say, well, I'm, I'm going to just draw a little dotted line right here to show that there's a merger. You know, it may not be necessary in your region to do that. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, now I'm going to guess, you know, we touched on it. Did we resolve it? I don't know about that. Um, you know, some aspects of our control are, are forever mysterious because there's so much variation. Um, but we'll always be able to come back to it with our hands. Yeah. Thanks, Matthew. Yeah. You like this? Do you use the R control, by the way? All the gestures? R. You mean in what situation? 
when you're teaching R control? Uh, I've, I've done that, yeah. I've, yeah. I've done the R control. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a little movement to figure out where it starts, where it goes. Good. Yes. As a follow-up, everybody, I can send you out a link. Uh, we'll see if we can put it up in the teacher resource. Um, it's, it's interesting. I made this video about two, uh, two years ago, maybe, where I use, I use paintbrushes to show how R control works across these categories and how you use a broad brush when you are control. So green and silver become one category. Ear, where it doesn't matter whether it's green or silver. And it's quite, it's quite interesting because I use an older chart that doesn't contain orange and it helps you understand why we include orange later. So I'll send you a link to that. Um, and it's also in the teachers, let me think, it's in our YouTube channel. So we have, we have some options there, but it's to say our control will always be interesting. Okay. Maybe we, Thank maybe you so we much. do that, and maybe yeah. we delve more into it in a couple of weeks. Uh huh. You've yeah. got next week's topic, but we're here every week, so. <laughs> exactly. Um, hey, if you're planning to come um, next week, I'm going to be working with my giant color it out cards that uh, to to give you, and there's quite a treat in there because Laura is preparing a nice download for you, and you can actually create giant color it out cards to play in the classroom. Okay, so here's color it out. Um, and our new edition of the print version of Color Out, the actual card game, is coming out in April. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And it's such a nice corollary. The idea being we always want to bring the app into the classroom in practical ways. So then they walk out and it's very familiar for that daily practice. Okay. Wonderful. Hey, thanks for coming again. And we look forward to seeing you next week. And anyone else who joins us live or watches us recorded, we love having you. And, uh, and send in your questions. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.